I grew up in a small town, like a really small town. This was one of the main reasons I wanted to move to New York City after college. I wanted to go somewhere densely populated where on a daily basis you're reminded of the highs and lows of life. But now that I've lived in the city for a few years, I find myself getting the most excited when I go back home. Maybe it's because my style has changed over the years, or maybe it's because I've changed over the years, but I feel like I'm in a place where I want to make work that's meaningful to me. And honestly, what could be more meaningful than home? So the first spot I went to was a bit of a bust. Honestly, the sun was too bright. I used to love this spot though. It was a cool place to start because like mentally it put me in a spot to try to capture things that were really meaningful to me. What stunk about this spot though is I was a little too close to uh, the Air Force Base that's right by my house. So I wasn't able to actually take off the drone and fly it. Um, so I was permitted from doing that. But you know, I did it a few years ago and it was fine, but I guess all the new ordinances uh, kind of nip that in the butt soon after i decided to get back in my parents car because i live in new york city and owning a car is just way outside of my means right now but so i decided to get back in my parents car and just drive to a new location yeah The spot I went to was uh, known to the locals as Jobstown. Um, and even if you're not a local, it's still just Jobstown. There isn't much here, honestly. It's a small strip of like 15 homes and uh, like two churches in the area. But I grew up going there. I grew up going to church there and religious ed there and probably had spent way too much time there. And though I'm not a particularly religious person, it's still an area I spent a lot of time. So it, it makes sense for me to at least document that. I got a few images here that I like, um, primarily the six by six images. When I'm struggling compositionally, I'll just go back and post and just try some different formats, typically square format, just to kind of see how it looks and feels. And I don't know what it is about six by six. Something about it has just been like calling my name lately, um, especially in post. I'm like, you know what, this might be, this might be decent. Uh, and I'll do it and I'll usually love it. And then I'll try to go back to four by five. I'm like, ah, no, I can't. So after taking a few shots there, I, I headed over to the last location. I headed over to this old impound lot to um, to photograph this, this car lot that I've just wanted to for a while. I recently found out that this car lot was sold. Um, and I always liked the square yellow building. Uh, so knowing that it was sold, I know that's going to change and something, it's going to be something else. So I wanted to make sure I got a picture of it as it was today. And you know, that's kind of the point of all of this, to get things that are fleeting and dis going to disappear so you have that historical reference of it. So at this point, the car lot is like pretty emptied out, but man i wish i like had either snuck on or asked for permission to go on and take some photos in like that old rusty car lot just because there was so many it was packed they were stacked on top of each other all crushed and impounded just like a scrapyard and 
That reminds me of Iron Giant, and I wish I, I wish I'd ask. I woke up the next morning at roughly like 5.30 in the morning. It's still like the crux of summer right now. So the sun goes up at like 5.55. So getting up for like a true sunrise is brutal right now. So 5.30 was the best I could muster up. This was honestly my favorite day of shooting over these kind of few days back home. Um, the light just worked really well. Uh, the photographs I got today, like on this day, on day two, were just, they made me so happy. Uh, starting here in particularly. and it was kind of chilly it was like mid 60s low 60s so i had that early morning kind of coolness to it and i got out and i drove and immediately kind of see this pond that i've always driven past and had this nice layer of fog on the back end of the pond but unfortunately it was hard to capture but looked so pretty The morning felt so purple, and when I went into post, I was pleasantly surprised because all of the purple was captured, and being able to pull those out, especially on the reflection in the water, just, <laughs> that's that good stuff. So these two shots in particular really made me, like, hungry for more because, like, I got these, and I knew they were going to be good, and it was just like, immediately, like, awesome. It's not even 6 a.m. yet, and we got one. Like, let's keep going. After capturing some of that crispy goodness... I made my way down the same road I've been driving down, just like another mile. The pictures honestly don't do it justice uh, on this farmhouse. Like just drove past it. I saw some nice light reflecting off of it. So I decided to stop. But the light that was reflecting off was just gorgeous. So I went onto the property a bit to take some photos, but I mean, people in this area are a little territorial. So I didn't want to go too far onto the property, but it was early enough. So I kind of like pushed it a little bit and I got some photos, but I really would have loved to have like gone further on. So after taking a few quick photos here, I really just got the few. Um, I decided to drive up a bit further, still on the same road, and I drove like literally one more mile up. Uh, and then immediately saw the sun, which was higher in the sky at this point, so a little bit more golden, uh, bouncing off these corn mills up on my right. So I decided to pull over. And so this was sort of my goal with this. I wanted to stray uh, as little from home as possible, uh, just to kind of, as an exercise of like capturing all of the stuff that's so kind of close and near and dear that I've always just driven right past and looked for something further, because further somehow means better, I guess because it's new, but to just get the stuff that's really close to me. And so this scene of the corn mill was stunning. So at this point, I kind of knew this was going to be one of my last stops of the of the morning, at least. Um, so I tried to take my time here. I tried to just get as many good images here as possible because I knew right after I was going to head home. Uh, I, I really wanted food and I really wanted coffee. So to make the most out of it, I really just try to work on capturing the warmth that I felt. So that way the viewers could like feel on their bones, like that warm early morning sun coming up. 
uh, the way I did. And I, I, you know, I think I did do that. Especially with this image, I love this photo. Honestly, I just stuck my camera in the cornfield and did my best to line up a composition. And I, I couldn't be happier with the results. I feel like it's a bit of a cliche composition, but I mean, like, come on, you, you, <laughs> you got to take the cheesy one sometimes. Like, you just, I think you just have to. And though this one's a little cheesy, I think it came out really good. But, you know, at this point, I was getting pretty hungry. Um, I was pretty, I was, I was looking for coffee. Uh, I crashed the drone, which is fun. So the drone went down, and I was decided, you know what? Yeah, let's uh, let's maybe pack it in. Drone's fine, by the way, though. Just one broken propeller, and good as new. So this ended up being like the last like full day, so to speak, of shooting. Um, I feel like most of the creative juices I had were kind of running running out. I, th I think it's just like a in tandem of like staying up late and getting up early. It just started to catch up to me. But I mean, that's okay. Like, so we drove out in this time to, uh, to Chesterfield. <laughs> taking a couple of images, I just decided to head back. But actually along the way, there was this uh, old kind of baseball park and I used to think this thing was so big. Um, and then I get there and it's, oh, it's not, it's pretty little, but the light that I got here, I don't know what had changed or what was going on or how it was reflecting, but the light here was absolutely spot on. Like I remember uh, playing Little League here and there was a few kids on the team that could like hit and they would hit home runs here. And I just remember being blown away. Like, how are they doing that? How are they hitting that? And it's funny to be here as an adult and you just kind of realize like how small this actually is. Like if I, if I hit a ball right now, I'd crush it. <laughs> it would go so far. Uh, but as Little League, I just remember thinking like, how do, they, how do they hit that? But now seeing it and seeing how tiny it is and seeing how tiny this entire park is, it's just funny to me like, how the older you get, how much harder it is to com get completely lost. I used to run around this place thinking it was endless and now you can look from end to end and I don't know. It's just funny how that works. So I knew when going home that my goal was to make a lot of good images and to make a video that I was proud of. Uh, but I didn't know what that video was going to be. But after the first day of going out, it became abundantly clear to me that this was going to be um, more than just a regular video and this is going to be more of a love letter to my hometown i fought growing up here so much i wanted to get to a city to experience life so much so that i completely overlooked the area that gave me that curiosity to begin with i completely overlooked the fact that if it wasn't for this town i wouldn't be the type of photographer that i am today 
because I wouldn't have grown up surrounded by the still rural landscapes that I grew up in. So when I was out shooting, thinking about the purpose behind this video, the only thing that kept coming to mind was, in quotes, photograph your hometown. Photograph the area that you know more than anyone else in the entire world. Photograph the tree that you always wish you could climb. Photograph the baseball park that you broke your wrist at sliding into second base. Photograph the pond you released a turtle in that you saved on the side of the road after almost getting hit by a car. Because hidden in those photos are the memories you share with them and the memories you're trying to share with the world. Any semi-decent photographer can go to Big Sur and take an amazing photo, but to make someone feel fully acquainted with a small town they've never been through before or been to before, that takes work, that takes patience, that takes skill, that takes a lot of curated effort. And I think I'm only just beginning to realize that. But hopefully this video did something for you. Hopefully I've successfully shared with you the beauty of my hometown and hopefully I've motivated you to go out and shoot or photograph whatever or wherever it is you call home. It's up to you to photograph that area and share that beauty with the world. Share those little known secrets that only you could know about this area and to let them into your world. And so I appreciate you watching. I really do. Uh, as always, like, subscribe, and go out and take some photos. Peace.